care for the world. No, no, neither more nor less. Around the world, young people are realising these things in a way that their elders maybe do not. And they are outraged at the way in which my generation have dealt with the natural world and the tragic situation and crucial situation, a disaster situation, that we have got the nerve to hand over to them. And they're making their voice heard. So David, right. good to meet you. And you. Right, now then. This is a complicated situation we've got here. Yes. And I'm going to ask you questions, and if you're very unkind, you'll ask me the question. What has been your funniest moment whilst filming? Last year, I made a film about penguins. And the film was about a new project to make a new colony of penguins. Kind of, we kind of staged a little experiment. We set up these decoy penguins on the beach and we filmed the penguins like waddling past. What we weren't expecting is that they actually copied the penguins that were already there. So you can see this penguin walking along and looking going, it's a penguin lying down, I, I guess I'll lie down next to it too. And it lay down and then it sort of got self-conscious and ran <laughs> off. So same for you, like, what's the funniest moment you can remember? I know, I suppose, that actually, as a filmmaker, you all know, that you're just a, teeing yourself up to, to give a piece to the camera and something, and then something happens. And I had a producer who, in his wisdom and his understanding of the natural workings of the natural world, elected to find a, a place on the banks of the Zambezi River, just off where there was a hippopotamus, a male in charge of his harem. Okay. So he said, right, say something. And so I said, well, just, and then suddenly, wah, 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 wah. So he said, okay. Well, uh. Now, if you know about hippopotamuses, they will not be put off, and no. there's no way that you can get rid of them. <laughs> and so I think I did it like five times, maybe six <laughs> times, every time, but as soon as I got as far as, well, here we are, and I don't think that we ever got the shot, or if we did, mm. we never, well, used it. <laughs> Okie dokie, right, next up. So, polar opposite, what's been the most upsetting moment you've filmed? Oh, well, well, when a, a creature is in agony one way or another. I remember one of the most heartrending examples was a friend of mine who was filming a, a baby elephant that was, couldn't walk and was dying of thirst. There was absolutely nothing he could do to get that little baby elephant uh, mm. to the waterhole, which was maybe a, a half a day's march away. Uh, there's no way in which its parent could he help it. Its parent is standing in guard over it. If you had tried to help it in any case, it would have charged. And it's mm. heartrending. Your heart, if you're there more than anybody else, let alone when people tell you that, that how heartless you are being about letting a poor animal die. That's yeah. all you could do. Any, any kill, any kill that you see is heartrending. I mean, you're not human if you aren't. I mean, and to see a baby animal that's being taken by, by a, a leopard or a, yeah. a cheetah or something. How do you maintain that, that distance when you're there in the field? Well, it's, it's a strange thing, isn't it? Um, and yet, you know very well that uh, if you interfered, you would almost certainly make things worse. And the fact of the matter is that leopard babies or cheetah babies, cheetah cubs, they also have to keep and be fed. And they can only be fed by killing things. So your job is to try and record the natural world. And by and large, you do best to stand back and just see what, what goes on and tries to understand it. Mm. I've forgotten whose turn it is. Aha, this is <laughs> a tricky one. Describe a time an animal made you think differently about the world. Ooh. I'm glad you're answering this than me. Yeah. <laughs> so I did a zoology degree, um, and one of the first things we had to do when I studied in Manchester was we had to go to the Manchester Museum and pick an animal, basically just write a little presentation about it. And I chose a sponge um, because it looked quite weird, and I thought it was quite cool, and I didn't really know anything about it. And I started reading into it, and I found out, realised that they don't have any tissues, they don't have any nerves, they don't have any organs, they have basically just a big blob of cells, and yet they are animals. They were kind of described as like basic or less advanced compared to other animals, and yet they have a 
way of life that works. I mean, they're largely unchanged for hundreds of millions of years. They're quite content sat there at the bottom of the ocean, essentially just filtering food through themselves, surviving. I started to just sort of rethink the way I looked at nature because whether it's a beautiful lion or a strange looking peculiar sponge at the bottom of the sea. <laughs> Pity you've chosen that because there is a kind of sponge called Euplectella. Do you know Euplectella? Which no. is otherwise okay. known as Venus's flower basket. And in some extraordinary way, it builds a, a complex tube which has hexagonal um, apertures to it of the most delicate beauty. The sponge sucks in water into its middle and then squirts it out of the top. Mm. And Euplectella does that. And with, the, with what comes in uh, are often the larvae the, the, of baby fish or fry, or very, very small fish, that swim in through the lattice of this wonderful structure. And it stays there because the food water is coming in, carrying edible particles. But of course, it grows. So it, it, it makes a, 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 a prison for itself. So it, so it lives within the sponge all its life, and I suppose hopes to goodness that it's going to find a mate that's going to come in <laughs> at the same time. But that too led me to a similar sort of thought to it. I think I've had, up until that point, I'd had a very human biased view on nature, and I kind of thought that some animals were better than others, like more evolved than others. And I started to realise that nothing's more like advanced and nothing is better. All of life is amazing and exists in the perfect in the best way it can for the, its environment and occupies its own niche and everything is kind of worthy of our interest and our respect okay next up what's the most significant consequence of climate change you've witnessed i suppose it's a coral reef really uh, it's the warming of the seas um, and uh, the first time I swam in the tropics, which was back now in the 50s, the first dive I did was on the most complex, the most beautiful, the most breathtaking animal community, which is a coral reef, with there are, uh, uh, 50 completely different animals that you've never seen before in your life, all astonishingly beautiful, all interacting in sort of way. And I went back to that same reef about what I suppose 25 years later, when global warming had caused the rise in the, in the reef and the acidity of the carbon dioxide as well as the temperature. Um, and that reef was like a graveyard. Uh, to start with, it looks rather dramatic and beautiful because it's pure white, yeah. dead. But then a, a brown alga develops all over it, so it looks foul yeah. and decaying which is what it is, um, and that was terrifying. I, I recently, last year, uh, dived on a coral reef for the first time, and um, it, it was the most amazing thing I've mm, ever seen. I agree. Um, it's breathtaking, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. It's, it's otherworldly. Mm. Um, it's a it's hundred times better than even you'd imagine. Like, right. if you'd win, and I, think, I, I agree, I think that's one of the most terrifying things, the yeah. fact that easily within my lifetime, this could be, I mean, that could be an experience that my kids or grandkids don't, it's impossible for them. Yeah. And, you know, and I'll be telling them, like, they'll be looking at an aquarium and I'll say to them, like, you know, those, those things used to exist in the wild. <laughs> yes, and what's more, you'll never get an aquarium like a, like a, no. a reef. Not okay. that degree of diversity and richness. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, if you could deliver one message to the younger generation, what would it be? care for the world, no, no, neither more nor less. Around the world, young people are realising these things in a way that their elders maybe do not. And they are outraged at the way in which my generation have dealt with the natural world and the tragic situation and crucial situation, the disaster situation that we're handling, have got the nerve to hand over to them. And they're making their voice heard. They say it with total conviction and great profundity and great passion and we should listen. Does it give you hope? I don't think it's going to get better in your time if you can hold it back to where we are now you'll have done a great thing 
But my suspicion is that we're going to lose a bunch of species yet before we can um, get things under control. Uh, we aren't the only organ living organisms on this earth, on this planet. We have no right, to, if we make it impossible for other animals to live on the planet, we are killing ourselves. We are totally dependent upon the natural world for every mouthful of food we eat and every lungful of breath that we take. But the other thing, of course, is that in the end with the climate change, we'll get great shifts in population. With sea rise, you'll get the cities that have been built on the sea, which is most of the great capitals of the, of the world, um, and they will slowly be flooding. So we must get together and as a world population act together. And that's never been achieved before in the history of the planet. But it has to happen now, it just has to happen. Otherwise, the whole nations are going to be wiped out. So caring for the natural world, it could not be more important. Okay, over to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, that was an absolute pleasure for me. Thank well you. Done. Very well done. Yeah.